Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, as been, uh, being mentioned earlier, my lecture my lecture for this topic is split into four parts. Okay, the first one I have explained about the simple process. So, we have done this. Next, I will move on into the second part that is the closing work in progress. Okay, what is closing work in progress? So, basically, what work in progress is partly completed process. Uh, it, is not, it is not a loss, okay? So, the simple process costing uh, that I've explained earlier ignores the problem of opening work in progress and the closing work in progress. But if you have the opening or closing work in progress, then the calculation of a cost per unit requires some additional computation. So basically, what is work in progress? So work in progress have lower unit costs than the fully completed production. So when you have the o o o whip or you have the C whip, then the CPU, the cost per unit, you cannot simply compute it directly by dividing the total cost with the number of units that you have in the process. Uh, for example, the fully completed production is 8,000 units and then you have partly completed production of uh, 2,000 units. So, to find the cost per unit, so you cannot simply add 8,000 and 2,000 together get uh, uh, give you a total of 10,000 units. So, that is wrong. So, what should you do? If you have this scenario, then what you need to do is that you need to convert uh, that uh, work in progress into finished equivalent units. In other words, you have to convert that into equivalent production so that then you can determine how much is the cost per unit. How to convert that? So, in order for you to convert your co uh, work in progress into equivalent production, you must estimate the percentage of completion or degree of completion of your work in progress. Okay, for example, uh, uh, if your work in progress, you have 2,000 units just now. You have the fully completed production of 8,000 units and you have the work in progress of 2,000 units. So that 2,000 units, you determine the percentage of completion. Let's say if it is 70% complete, then you will have to times that 2,000 with your percentage or degree of completion 70%. So you will get 1,400 units. For example, here, you have you are producing shirts and let's say uh, at the end of the period, at the end of June, for example, uh, this shirt is only 70% complete. So, you have another 30% uh, not yet completed uh, at the end of June. Let's say you are in process 1, the cutting process. For that particular process and for that particular period, at the end of June, the completed production is 8,000 units. And the closing WIP that you have is, let's say, 2,000 units. But th that 2,000 units, you determine the degree of completion. They are only 70% complete. Okay, uh, another 30%, this part is not yet completed. So, what you need to do is that you need to find the equivalent production. So, or equivalent units. So, what you need to do is that the 2,000 units, but all these 2,000 units are only 70% complete. So, to find the equivalent units will be 2,000 units times the 70% degree of completion. So, you will get 1,400 equivalent units. So, for your total equivalent production, that will be the 8,000 units, the completed units, 8,000 units, plus the 1,400 units gives you 9,400 units. Okay, so that is only then, uh, okay. So, that is the equivalent production. Uh, if let's say you need to determine the cost, the cost per unit. So, if the, let's say the total cost for that particular period is 18,000. So, 18,000 will be divided by 9,400 equivalent units. So, gives you this as the CPU. Okay. If you have elements of cost with different degrees of completion, so the complication in obtaining equivalent production is when not all of the elements that make up the total cost may have reached the same degree of completion just now. For example, uh, in my previous example, I am saying that all the elements of cost, they have 70% degree of completion. But what if you have different degree of completion for material, labor, overhead, 
direct expenses etc okay so uh, now for material material may be added at the start of the process a degree of completion by the end of the period normally it is hundred percent complete but for your labor overhead and so on uh, they may be added throughout the process and they can be hundred percent complete or they can be partially completed that means they can be less than hundred percent so when there is different degree of completion what you need to do is that you need to prepare separate equivalent production calculation must be made for each elements of cost in that case you need to you need to prepare the statement of equivalent unit cost per unit and evaluation this one i will show you later on how to prepare this statement for the input material and material introduced whenever you have this okay uh, for the material introduced the degree of completion may not be 100 percent so if it is not 100 percent it is shown separately from the input material for the input material it refers to the output from the previous process so the degree of completion is always 100 percent complete later on i will show you this one the difference when we do the question okay and uh so uh uh, that's all for now then i will explain to you i will provide you with a comprehensive example so that you can see how to do the calculation for your closing wip thank you